All right, good morning, everybody. I'm hoping you can hear me. Is that mic clear enough, Phoebe? Yeah. Thank you so much for taking time out of your morning um, to come along um, to Hawkesbury City Council this morning. My name's Elizabeth Richardson. Um, I'm the General Manager at Hawkesbury City Council um, and I'm just going to be facilitating um, our session this morning. Um, before we get too far into it, I'd like to um, introduce our Mayor, Councillor Sarah McMahon, to um, give a welcoming address. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Liz, and thank you everyone so much for being here today. Um, I'd like to, of course, acknowledge that we have Councillor Les Sheeter and Shane Jurek in the room as well, and our Federal MP, Susan Templeman. And of course, all of our people uh, who have a business uh, or a home in Windsor in the main street. So thank you for coming along. Uh, I'll be very quick because I know that the purpose of today is an information session. Uh, but I did want to say that we as council have decided to be proactive rather than reactive in this space. Uh, we have gone through, obviously, the South Windsor build and the Richmond build, and we have learnt lessons from that. Uh, personally, I think the result looks amazing. Uh, South Windsor has really been picked up. Uh, just so you understand, when this item came to council all last term, I wasn't in this item <laughs> because of a uh, conflict of interest with a building in Richmond. So a lot of this stuff is going to be new to me as well. So I think as we kick off the Windsor journey, um, the aim is to work together. Um, the aim is to minimise any um, concerns that you have. And I really want you to know that either myself as the mayor, the councillors or the staff uh, are here to really talk to you along the way. Please don't ever hesitate if you want to raise anything with us along the journey. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing the information and I hope you are too. So let's get into it. Thanks, Liz. Thanks very much, Sarah. All right, um, I will of course um, begin by acknowledging um, that we're ga gathered on, on Darug land. The Darug and the Darkenjung peoples are the traditional custodians of, um, of this country and um, I will pay my respects um, to them, to the elders past, present and emerging and extend that respect of course to any First Nations people with us in the room today. So, um, you've heard from Sarah through our welcoming address. Um, Today's session has been specifically organised for the businesses of the Windsor Town Centre to provide you with project information, um, provide you with an update um, on the project, how we're faring on that, um, provide you with an update on an, a project that you may or may not be familiar with, which is our wayfinding signage project, which is running um, alongside and, and parallel to what we know as our livability project. Um, we've also got with us in the room today um, a number of council staff and our project team who I'll introduce you to along the way. Um, and um, I'm going to be handing over, I'll run you through that, those project updates and timelines. I'm going to be there, then handing over to Nick Ison from Place Design Group to talk you through the specifics of the design for the Windsor Town Centre um, and the key considerations. Our project manager. Um, for Windsor. Manning Ibrahim will then um, provide an overview of the construction approach and the mitigation measures that um, we'll be using to reduce the particular construction impacts as we go through the build. Um, and then I'll hand over to our new dedicated um, stakeholder contact, Phoebe Schumacher, who will introduce herself um, and provide some information on next steps. What we're then going to do um, is wrap up the session. Um, we'll bring some, some breakfast around. Um, our staff and the project team will be uh, mingling, floating throughout the foyer and in here um, to provide you with any additional information, answer any particular questions that you might have about the, about the project. Um, importantly, if you think of any questions after you leave, um, please send them through to our, our dedicated um, business email address, business at hawksbury.nsw.gov.au. Um, and all questions and answers will be uploaded um, up to our website um, that everyone has access to. So, a few little housekeeping notes. So, we're actually recording this session this morning. Um, this is a public forum, so please just be respectful of that. Um, if there's an emergency, um, please follow, obviously, the directions of our, of our council staff with, um, with us today so that they can keep you all um, and all of us safe. Um, Pop your mobile phones onto silent if you haven't already done so. Um, and we do have bathroom facilities um, down the corridor on the left um, and then a, a right turn and the exit is located behind you. Okay, so let's get started. Before we talk through the process today, um, I wanted to touch on the project, on the grants um, that have enabled this project um, and the purpose of that particular funding. 
So um, and some of you may know that the Western Sydney City deal um, was an agreement formed a number of years back between um, the Australian government, the New South Wales government and the eight councils um, that effectively make up Western Sydney from um, Hawkesbury in the north, Blue Mountains uh, in the west, right down through to, to Wallandilly in the south. Um, effectively a tripartisan agreement um, coming off the back of um, looking to improve livability outcomes in Western Sydney um, on the back of, of course, um, the new Western Sydney Airport. So the Western Parkland City Livability Program um, was a key part of that city deal for local government and provides um, funding to councils to deliver important community infrastructure and public spaces. Livable cities, um, you know, at a really high level, support the health, wellbeing, quality of life of the people who live and work in them. The purpose of this funding is to help create neighbourhoods um, that are not only livable, but they are creative, sustainable and healthy. And so through this program, um, Hawkesbury City Council has been allocated, um, has, alloc has been allocated 18.75 million for the revitalisation of Rin Windsor, South Windsor and Richmond Town Centres. So that 18.75 million is made up of um, a substantial um, contribution made from the other levels of government through that livability um, program, um, but also some, a co-contribution from council itself. Um, this work is considered to be um, a foundation piece aimed at revitalising um, our public spaces to support and create economic development critically, um, but also that social interaction piece um, within each centre. The public domain works um, are really about aiming to address Hawkesbury's underperforming um, town centres by undertaking a major um, in significant levels of public investment aimed at rejuvenating our public spaces, um, leveraging off um, all the beauty and the history um, and the natural amenity um, that the Hawkesbury's towns and villages already have. So when we submitted um, the grant application to get this funding, um, we had to send the project information to the grant office to have it approved, like that's how grants work. Um, so we're, we're controlled in terms of what we're allowed to do within that project scope and um, funding has been allocated specifically um, for town centre revitalisation um, and livability. Um, and one of those um, caveats um, is that the funding uh, needs to be expended by September 2023. So that's the high level livability program. Running parallel with that is another grant program um, known as Greening Our City. So um, this provides funding to councils to help plant trees, um, providing more tree canopy and greenery. Um, through this program, um, council was allocated $1.2 million in, in funding and like the livability program needs, um, also needs to be expended by September 2023. Um, these two funding streams together have effectively allowed us to deliver the Hawkesbury Livability Project. Um, 319 trees overall. Okay, so the Hawkesbury Livability Project, um, as I mentioned, is the, the revitalisation of um, Richmond, South Windsor and Windsor. Um, so that they're well-designed, well-managed places um, that are able to deliver um, economic, social, environmental benefits. The planned upgrades um, have seen all three town centres received advanced street planting um, that will create um, green boulevards. We're trying to really mitigate the effects of climate change and create long-term livability in the Hawkesbury's um, main regional uh, town centres. We know that Western Sydney experiences extreme heat in summer um, and we're looking to future-proof the livability and economic stability of the LGA. By implementing the street trees, um, we're also able to reduce the reliance on cars by improving the walkability of our neighbourhoods um, and they're, they're in, therefore meeting our environmental sustainability benefits as well. Um, the, the simple fact is we know of our um, early work on, on climate change in the Hawkesbury, we are extremely vulnerable um, and early figures are something like in, in 40 years time we will see a 40% increase in days over 35 in the Hawkesbury. So this is the sorts of things that we've got to try to tackle um, through greening our neighbourhoods. Um, also, the designs um, are different for each of those three town centres and celebrate um, each of those, those three villages in, in particular ways. 
So, as I said, each um, town centre has a different approach. So, um, the aim for Windsor is to, for it to be a town centre that obviously preserves and enhances the natural and built heritage of Windsor. Richmond um, was intended um, to be a vibrant destination that enhances the existing heritage character. Um, and South Windsor, um, because it doesn't have those traditional heritage characteristics, um, is a far more contemporary um, look and feel, and I'm sure most of you are, are familiar with the works that we've um, recently um, undertaken down there. So this is um, obviously the before and after down at Richmond. So most of you will know that we're um, almost complete at Richmond and South Windsor. I want to show you a couple of before and after so you can just get a sense of the look and feel um, before and after those upgrades. Um, on the screen, you'll obviously see the before and after of Richmond Town Centre, in particular, the new um, paving and planting. Um, I think it's really, um, really clear that we've maintained the heritage character of that area um, through, the, through the type of the paving that we've used in that location. Moving down to South Windsor, um, this is um, a before and after down at Burrowang um, Park in South Windsor, in particular the tree planting on either side of the footpath. The focus here um, was to increase that greenery and tree canopy um, as, you, as you start to go down that hill um, approaching the, the station. So, moving to the Windsor Town Centre upgrade. Um, the scope specifically has um, enhanced and new paving, um, new street furniture, um, which is um, almost like for like, I think, with the, with the existing, um, sensitive to the, to the character um, and heritage of the area. New planting um, and pedestrian crossing upgrades. In Windsor Mall, um, we've got an open space um, suitable for events, performances, um, which will increase the pedestrian um, activity, upgraded paving, um, the engraved page, paving project um, for purchase by the community, street furniture upgrades, outdoor dining areas, um, and lots and lots of planting as well. So I want to just take a little moment to walk you through um, the history of this particular project over the last couple of years and, and sort of where we're heading and the key milestones that have been reached. Um, I know that many of you in this room are long-term business owners um, and would have been involved with this project from right from the beginning. Um, and so none of this might be news to you, but we just wanted to make sure that we're all up to date and on the same page. So this um, project kicked off um, right back in 2018 um, when um, Place Score um, conducted some initial consultation with the community. Um, the key findings out of that were um, predominantly around local history and heritage, um, cleanliness of public spaces, the natural environment, the visual character of the area and trees and greenery. So then what that did, um, Council made a submission for the livability grant, um, which I mentioned earlier is the key driver for this project. Then that grant application was then approved in the February of 2019. And then in September 2019, so it took a few months there um, to get ourselves up and running. Um, and council completed the expression of interest and tender process for a consultant to develop the master plan um, and the public domain plan um, for Windsor Town Centre and Urbis um, were the firm that were engaged to do that. So in March 2020, um, Urbis completed an urban design and place analysis of the Windsor Town Centre, which included looking at the urban design elements, um, a whole suite of studies um, and other key documents. Council then undertook community and stakeholder engagement. Um, I know many of you um, got involved in that, in that process, so thank you. We ran um, a whole suite of activities at that particular point in time, including um, business street walks, stakeholder workshops, pop-up stalls, online surveys, postcards, social media, um, and a dedicated project email um, and phone number at that point in time. In April, um, the, the staff then briefed um, the councillors on w where we were at through that process, and in particular on the outcomes um, of that community engagement. Throughout July, um, our engagement activities um, continued, um, in particular um, around Indigenous engagement um, at that point in time. Um, to support the creation of the Vibrant Towns and Villages Master Plan. 
The engagement was undertaken, um, again at that time, through a mix of, um, of engagement methods, including face-to-face -face and written um, correspondence. So moving through August, September, um, the draft master plan and public domain plan were then placed on public exhibition. So again, during that time, um, a variety of, of, of engagement activities were undertaken. Um, street walks, stakeholder workshops, um, including with... Mayor will be back. Um, project control groups, chambers of commerce, local businesses and the like. Um, an interactive digital summary was placed on the master plan um, document, was prepared and used for public exhibition. Project fact sheets, online surveys, face-to-face um, -face stall, social media and the like. So um, having been through that, there was um, a further councillor briefing at that time. Um, and then that master plan, using all of those inputs, was then subsequently, um, the master plan and public domain plan were then adopted by council um, in September 2020. In December um, was the point at which we secured the Greening Our City grant, which then enabled um, that those additional tree plantings um, to feed into the scope of the, the project. Um, and during all of that feedback was, as I said, the form, formed the basis of that master plan document. So through 2021, um, March, um, the, the place design group um, presented the, the designs, the more detailed designs at this point um, for feedback from council. In June, um, we undertook community engagement um, on, the, on those designs, seeking feedback on those, those designs. Simultaneously, um, underground utility assessment and mapping um, was completed in and around the mall in particular. Um, and in August, we undertook heritage and, and Aboriginal cultural assessments. The um, engraved um, pager pro paver project um, was launched in the September, led by Darren, um, and supported by council at that time. So moving through um, to more recent history, so February 2022, um, a road safety audit was undertaken. In May um, was, a, was a key point for us. There was um, a council notice of motion to review the design and undertake further investigation in order to retain the iconic features of the mall, um, including the rotunda, um, the wisteria plants, um, the water wheel, gas lamps and plane trees. So um, that then um, led to um, further engagement with Fire and, New Fire and Rescue New South Wales um, to gain approval for the retention of the rotunda um, and the designs and plans were then updated accordingly. In September, um, there was another notice of motion to restore the gas lamps um, while minimising um, costs and emissions. Um, investigations into restoring the gas lamps um, is still ongoing, going well, but there's still some more um, work to be done um, underneath, the, underneath the existing um, paving work at the moment. Um, and then in February 2023, so right now, um, approval um, from the Heritage New South Wales was granted for the project, which is um, another exciting milestone for us. So I wanted to just briefly touch on the wayfinding and signage project. So this is a separate project. As I said, it's sort of running separate but parallel. Um, this is a project that aims to improve how visitors and residents are guided through the local, the, through the entire local government area, um, to, to find the diverse experiences, attractions, um, and the services that that um, council provides. So the scope of the wayfinding and signage project includes signage to improve wayfinding to key destinations such as public transport, parking, retail areas, the river, um, parks, and, and other civic facilities. <coughs> The creation of heritage trails um, through the town centres to highlight and provide information about the rich European um, and Aboriginal history um, of each of the town centres and the Hawkesbury. Um, new entry signs, so replacing all those daggy welcome to the Hawkesbury signs that look like they were put there 40 years ago, they probably were. Um, and key sites um, and tourist facilities as well. So running briefly through this, um, uh, the tender process was for that um, program was completed in January 2021 to engage the consultants to assist in the development of a wayfinding and signage guidelines um, and a, a firm called The Blueprint um, were engaged at that particular point in time. 
Um, a project control group was established in February 2021 with a, a cross-collaborative team across the, across the organisation, um, together with um, engagement at that point in time around research, stakeholder meetings uh, and discussions um, through um, February and March um, 2021. The concept um, wayfinding and signage program was developed in March 2021 and then um, it was subject to formal um, community consultation and exhibition through October and November 2021. Through February 2022, the wayfinding and signage strategy was adopted, um, did some work pushing um, that through um, our Heritage Committee for their input um, and their valuable contribution to that. The Blueprint Consultants presented the draft content of the Heritage Trail um, through to the Heritage Committee on the 28th of July um, and the Heritage Committee provided their feedback. The um, a Council briefing was held in August. Heritage Committee was then presented to a Council meeting in that same month. A tender process um, to process, procure, manufacture and install wayfinding signage occurred in October and November. Um, and that tender report was signed off at the end of last year. So that's quite an exciting milestone. So the contractor um, was engaged uh, last month for the manufacture install um, last bits of detailed design. Um, and then February 2023, um, we've kicked off with the inception meeting and the, and the contractor um, to commence that project. And at the moment, um, that contractor is in the midst of a detailed design um, of the nuts and bolts of, of that um, signage. So I would now like to introduce Nick from Place Design Group to talk you through um, the specifics of the design of the Windsor Town Centre and all of the considerations that have gone into it. Thanks, Nick. Uh, morning everyone, my name's uh, Nick Eisen, I'm an exec Executive Director at Place Design Group and we've been involved in the project since uh, December 2020. Um, as, as you've heard, the, uh, the master plan was developed by Urbis and has been taken on board by Place Design Group in, in 2020 and our role in the project was to develop the design from the concept through to detailed design and the successful construction and delivery on site working with Manny and the council team at the same time. Um, got a bit of a video displays so as displays um, this is through the Windsor Mall and basically to summarize what this whole project is about is reinvigorating and revitalizing the town centers and not taking away from the importance of what the heritage is for the space uh, throughout the project we had a specialist team of heritage consultants engineers geotech advisors working with us to ensure that we are not impacting anything from a heritage perspective and making sure we're enhancing that throughout the whole project. As you can see, the mall uh, is a really important part of this project and it's about ensuring that we can create pedestrian safety, accessibility and improving canopy coverage of the space. The strategic placement of trees throughout the design has uh, been considered in, with the heritage buildings to enhance the views and improve accessibility to local businesses like yourselves and ensure that we're providing safe environments for the uh, pedestrians to move through the areas. Throughout the design process, specifically for Windsor Mall, we wanted to create spaces which could be utilised for flexible events, for marketing, uh, markets potentially, but also movement through the spaces. We designed the, the paving through the areas to ensure that it adds to the wayfinding <coughs> ability and movement through the space and connections to the entrances to shops. Um, through the process, we're obviously, as I mentioned, sensitive to heritage local character. The project is like for like in that we're just working with a paved space and that's probably most important to streets that we're working with, with Windsor, um, South Windsor and Richmond. We're working with footpaths. The issues that we saw with those footpaths at the same time uh, were trip hazards, accessibility and access to local shops. Uh, and at the same time, we've been able to improve canopy coverage and improve parking legibility through the areas. And uh, as we've spoken about in the, earlier in the presentation, canopy coverage is hugely important for pedestrian accessibility through the space uh, because we are Western Sydney, it's getting hotter. And we want to improve canopy coverage through all the spaces that we're designing, particularly Windsor, South Windsor and Richmond, because 
that promotes pedestrian activity. And with that pedestrian acti activity comes more access to the businesses, more ability to promote uh, activities which are outside of what you'd normally be able to do and promote shade and people to sit in these areas. Uh, what we're seeing at the moment through a lot of the projects that we're doing is uh, when we're providing the shade and ability to promote canopy coverage, more people are getting out of their cars and walking down the streets, walking down the footpaths and utilising the spaces in different ways, which is promoting activation outside of what you'd normally see at the moment. Um, improving accessibility and safety and legibility through the projects are most important to us. Uh, as you, as you can see from some of the existing footpaths at the moment, lots of trip hazards. We're improving those by way of updating the paving and making it extra, uh, more legible and easy to move through. Um, Sidelines, at the moment, specifically in the Windsor Mall, we have a lot of disjointed tree movements, furniture in the spaces. It's hard to move through with vehicles. There's potential for uh, issues with pedestrians and vehicles reversing in those spaces. Uh, what we've created there is an open central line for visibility and movement. If access needs to be through there for, for maintenance and drop off and deliveries, that's provided. Uh, and seating and everything else moved to the outside peripheries, underneath trees, and promoting that alignment with buildings and access to those spaces. And as I said, the increase of canopy coverage to promote more pedestrian engagement. Um, specifically for South Windsor and Richmond, same ideas. The, the, the theme that was come across from the master plan and has been delivered throughout this whole project is revitalisation and reinvigoration. Uh, and as you can see from what's already been built out on site, it's an upgraded footpath to improve the safety and accessibility and legibility. Um, the increase of canopy coverage in streets to improve pedestrian experience and with that has become the legibility of parking spaces and the movement in those areas. And again, it is like for like. We have taken what's there at the moment, we've worked with the levels, and we've improved it through the upgraded paving and the improvement of uh, damaged areas around the, working around the services and ensuring that we're not impacting those areas at the same time. Um, just want to stress the whole process has been in tight collaboration and engagement with Heritage Consultants, which has been the most important part of the project for us. We want to make sure that we're taking the heritage and the importance of what that heritage essence is for the space and not change it but improve it and enhance it and take it into the future. And that's been the utmost importance to us as well, and improving the safety through the areas. Um, so that's a brief overview of the uh, design outcomes. I'm happy to talk to anyone after the um, presentation. And uh, now we're talking about construction approach and Manny will come up and talk to that. Thanks. Thanks, Nick. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming out. Good to see you all. Um, my name is Manny Ibrahim. I'm an uh, independent project manager representing council on this project just to ensure that you know, all the management side of consultants, con contractors and that whole probity side is undertaken in a, in a, in a, in a, I guess in a compliant way. Um, I'll be taking you through the, the construction process or the approach, but I just want to start off by saying how excited I am about this project. Council's obviously invested a lot of money into this project to improve this amenity. So it's an exciting journey for everybody. We just all got to, I guess, be patient through it all. It's not going to be a quick process. It's going to be a long process, as, as you all know. Um, typically, on these types of projects, uh, w what the contractor will do is they'll stage the actual construction process. And, and the reason they do that is to ensure that there's minimal disrup disruption to businesses. So. We haven't got the contractor on board yet. We're still in the process of going out to tender, but as, as, as it was done on, on South Winds and Richmond, it was staged within various components along the entire town centre. Um, but once we understand these timeframes, we'll make sure we share that with you guys, just to ensure that you guys are on board with what we're doing and, this, and, and the timeframes that we're looking at. We'll also make sure we've got a specialist uh, communication consultant on board who's engaging with businesses so that when we have anything that we'll be undertaking that may impact you guys or, or residents or businesses, we'll make sure that we give you guys um, sufficient notification of the upcoming works. We do have a lot of uh, mitigation measures in place when it comes to construction. So typically we carry out a lot of things. Well, these, these are just a few of them that we're gonna go over. But we, we carry out dilapidation reports and, and the main objective of that is to ensure that the condition of all the assets, you know, being buildings, being uh, shops and all, all the like, 
uh, are recorded in their, in their current state, just to ensure that there's, if there's any damage or any issues associated with that, it's all recorded up front, so we can make sure that that's also um, a, a transparent process for everybody that's involved. We might also decide to do certain works at night, which will be giving people notification about that, uh, or outside of business hours. And, and, and the main reason we do that, if, if we see that as a high risk activity that may disrupt businesses, we'll carry that out at night time. We'll also make sure that we've got access provided for all businesses. So whether we put down ramps into shops or, or, or safety measures to ensure that there's safe access, it's not always an easy one. There's always, you know, we always have to ensure that we're um, we're on top of that because it's always dynamic. Things are changing every day, being such a, a big project. Um, but we'll also make sure that the safety of everybody is maintained throughout the whole process. And we do this also by ensuring we've got uh, traffic control measures in place. So it'll be busy. It'll be definitely, it won't be quiet. Uh, it'll, be a busy, it'll be a busy time. Um, but I just want to reiterate to everyone here as well that we do have many professionals who are all experts in their field who are engaged for this um, project, who have been brought on board and the aim of this is to obviously provide a, a positive outcome. But with that, we've also got, uh, you know, we've also asked everybody to be patient and we do have rules in place, you know, typical rules that, for example, that we ask everybody to respect is, you know, not to, not to approach contractors when they're carrying out work. Um, the reason is obviously your safety is the first and foremost importance to everybody, but also it provides a lot, it, it could trigger a lot of contractual um, issues as well. So by people talking to contractors, it makes the project a lot more complex because everybody's starting to have their own discussions with them. And that's why we've brought on somebody who is specifically engaged to take on all the feedback from local businesses. And that goes through a channel that will then be obviously um, sent on to the relevant people to answer. So that's, that's a quick snap of what's going on and looking forward to it again. I'll, I think we've got next steps with Phoebe. Yeah, thanks, Manny. Oh. Appreciate that. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Thank, you. um, thanks, Manny, and thank you, Nick, also. So um, now I'd like to introduce Phoebe Schumacher from Cred Consulting. So um, my team, having worked their way through um, the upgrades at um, South Windsor and Richmond, became really apparent to us um, the, the complexities um, associated with not only those two, but also obviously the Windsor one um, is probably another level in terms of its complexity with um, a whole range of stakeholders that we need to um, need to work with. So um, we've recognised the need to, to bring in some, some specialist support, some additional support um, for our team. And so we've brought on Phoebe um, and she's going to talk you through kind of the, the next step. So welcome, Phoebe. Thanks, Elizabeth. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, and it's nice to meet you all. So as Elizabeth said, I'm Phoebe. I'm the new stakeholder engagement contact for the Windsor Town Centre upgrade. So this would be a great opportunity to just introduce myself to you all um, and let you know my role moving forward. So as we move into construction, I will be helping provide you all with the information that you need. So you know what's happening with the works, how we're mitigating them for you and what the next steps are going forward. So going forward, I will be doing, as you can see on the screen, a couple of um, little bits and pieces to give you all that information. So there'll be regu regular project update newsletters. There'll be a project notification board um, where you'll be able to stay up to date with that project information. Um, as you know, there's the Your Hawkesbury Your Say website, which I'm sure you've all looked at at one point or another. So that's sort of gonna be the one-stop shop for all the project updates and latest information in relation to Windsor Town Centre. Um, we also have a business database. So if you're not already receiving emails and things like that from council, just let me or one of the team know, or you can email us um, at business at hawksbury.nsw.gov.au. We'll add you to that database. And it just means that when we do have new information that's going straight to you, directly to your inbox. So just let me know if you're not already on that list. Uh, so, and if you have any questions, you can also contact me on that email address on the screen. I'm more than happy to help out. Um, in terms of next steps, so as Manny mentioned, there is um, some staging with this project. So stage one is Windsor Train Station to Fitzgerald Street, and stage two is both sections of Windsor Mall up to Newbridge Road. So the next thing to happen is that a constructor, sorry, a constructor, a contractor will be engaged to commence work on stage one. Um, and at the same time, the design review will continue for stage two and the gas lamp investigations. So in terms of construction completion dates, we're looking at stage one construction completion in late 2023. 
um, and stage two is pending. So as you may remember from Elizabeth's presentation earlier, um, the grant funding that council has currently needs to be spent by September this year. All right, I think that's it for me. Thank you very much. So um, that was pretty pretty short and sharp. Um, that brings us to the end of the session. And once again, thank you very much for coming along. Um, I think okay. I'm hoping our caterings are off. <laughs> um, so you're all welcome to um, either move into the foyer, hang around, look at the detailed drawings. We've got um, paving samples and the like um, for both um, paving um, and some of the, the sandstone on the um, wayfinding signage. Um, if you've got any questions, um, like I said, um, our project team um, and our the three-ish staff from our um, economic development team, Amanda, Belinda and Gemra, um, are all here and, and happy to answer those questions. Um, if you can think of any questions after you leave, like I said, um, send them through to that to that business at Hawkesbury. What we're going to do, we're going to be uploading those question and answers. We've got a rolling log of them that we'll um, keep updating. And likewise, um, the video from today, the today's presentation will be made available um, on Council's website um, for those businesses um, and other general members of the community that, that weren't able to come today. So that's it from us. Uh, once again, thank you very much um, and please hang around and, and have a quick bite of breakfast and we're here to answer any questions you might have. So thank you very much.